Does lemonade one taste good? It's all right. Well, once you start drinking food, every alcohol tastes good. <laughs> the MD 2020s, those were good. Alright, it's good. Anything that's off, off limits? No, bro. No, you vergüenza? Zero. Bro, you know, con todo, I, menos there's nothing I haven't done or talked about that you could embarrass me about. I already said it myself. Well, shit, there. let's go. Okay, what are we talking about, bro? I know. <laughs> it was a live podcast, baby. The most yes, authentic, sir. most organic podcast out here. <laughs>Nah, because there's some people that, we, hey, is there a certain top? I don't want to talk about this. You can't. Not this time. Not now. Not these moments. Not 2023. Everything has to be out there. No, bro. You want to fake the funk, people. They live for this shit. Do you understand? Yeah. My fame of claim will be to fuck Richard over. <laughs> you understand? Like that's, <laughs> that's certain people in their lives, they gravitate to This is what my fucking... This is how they're going to know me. I yeah. fucked Richard over and I discovered he lied. That's bullshit, bro. Those are <laughs> hey, 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 you well, can't we, hurt me, bitch. I did coke. I did bitches. I did all <laughs> sorts of shit, bro. I'm hanging hey, out with you, homeboy. Yeah, I'm the, it's the Eminem effect, motherfucker. <laughs> tell them what I need. Just tell them. <laughs> well, I get. I guess we found our thumbnail, right? We found the title yeah, to the yeah, thumbnail. We did. Richard Villa is a phone. Hey. <laughs> but... We kind of we already said it. Everybody's host Dylan yeah, out there, yeah, Dusko, and we got one of the most <sighs> unapologetic, raw as as could be, talks of shit whenever he wants to. Why is it apo- un- unapologetic when you're being honest? Do you understand? It's it's people. It's not an. Unapo- you felt uncomfortable, motherfucker. <laughs> I told mean. you the truth. <laughs> You, you put it on, oh, how dare you know, how dare you, bitch? <laughs> Do you understand? Why are you mad at me? You're the one acting like an idiot, and I'm calling you on it, and he's so unapologetic. No, you're a piece of shit. Like, call it like what it is, and people don't do that anymore. It's, I, I love that you said that. You're being as real as you can be, and people still expect you to say sorry for how you feel. No. Ni madres. No, Ni madres. Ni madres no, for what? No, fuck it. No, fuck you. It is what it is, bro. What the fuck? See, this is the sensitive bullshit we're living through hey, right now. Hey, low key? You yeah. understand? No. No, you don't get a I'm sorry. Fuck you. Yeah. It is the game. We did what we did. It is, it is what it is. is my age are sensitive as fuck, yo. Well, there, there's that misconception, right? That you could... You can only be emotional when you care about others. No, motherfucker. I'd rather only be emotional to myself. And if you feel a certain way, how you said... That's on you. That's how you. Me do. vale. There's Translation: I don't give a ways. fuck about you. <laughs> yeah, like that's it. But for the, if you haven't, everybody seen you TikTok, Instagram, right? But you're a fucking OG, OG. Oh, bro, I've been in the Televisa. Game. This is Netflix. <laughs> toured with some of the biggest names in comedy, Latinos. From when 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 did you get started in in comedy? Primer chiste que te chaste, güey. Shit, I was... <laughs> like, I was 11. No, bro. My dad said, ponía pedo, güey. This is the thing. I come from five other siblings, so it's five of us. It's, mm-hmm. I'm a, one of five. I was the second oldest, so there's two younger kids after me right away. And uh, I was five years old, six years old, and my dad said, ponía pedo. We lived in Watts. And Oof. my dad would get drunk, and then he worked the bars as a security guard. So he brings his friends over, and he would pay me fucking a dollar for a pepito joke. I said, back to Ambrose. All the pepito jokes. <laughs> and I would tell pepito jokes, and I would fuck them all up. I mean, it's a tono, it's a tono. I want to hear pepito uh, joke. Pepito joke. Uno que se del borrachito, güey, llega. Vieja, prepárate para hacer el amor cinco veces. Ay, viejo, ¿a poco vienes tan cachondo? No, vengo con cuatro amigos. Oh, <laughs> yo. Dude, that was the first joke my dad ever taught me. Échate el pico, échatelo. <laughs> and he would give me a dollar. <laughs> so how, how, many, how many jokes would you throw a night then? Oh, bro, as many as I can remember as a kid. I knew it was fucking joke a dollar. I'm going to that night, bro. He's like, ahora comemos bien, hijos de puta madre. But I was like, his friends would chip in too because they wanted to hear a joke. So it came from there, the necessity of wanting to be recognized by your father and, and you're competing with other brothers and, yeah. and fuck it, it doesn't matter if it's three o'clock in the morning. 
I get to enjoy this time with him. Man. And so that's where it, it came from. I understood that I can get love by making people laugh. Yeah. You grew up in Compton or Watts? Both. A long story, my dad, we, I was born in Martin Luther King Hospital, lived in Watts. We moved to Mexico, come back. When I was like 10, we go to Compton. I was raised in Compton. Then we go to South Central. And that's it from South Central. It was like my dad said, every fucking shitty city in this country we're going to visit. Like that motherfucker put us in air. I said, Dad, really, bro? The more money we made, the shittier the town got, bro. I was like, Dad, in Watts, we had three homes. We're back to South Central. It's a bedroom? Come on. The fuck? You make more money. You work at Hertz now. <laughs> so we're trying to progress, not regress. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. That motherfucker kept getting us more and more to the ghettos. Um, but yeah, bro, that was my lifestyle. But I, I think our, our, our dads, Mexican dads, no, it doesn't matter how much money they have, they're not gonna waste one more cent that they oh, need to. Cold, like. Oh yeah, bro. Hell yeah. But you hey. gotta understand, they come from that mentality too. Yeah. My dad didn't come from a fucking big city. It was a fucking small. El, 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 el Cucapá, güey, en Mexicali. Hay un ranchito 45 minutes away from the city of Mexicali. <laughs> so that motherfucker would have to walk like. I, you know, maybe he was making it up. Like, yeah, maybe. But I was just like, ah, me ibas a la escuela. I was like, oh, fuck ca- you, dude. Caminaba dos horas para llegar a la escuela y todo. In Mexicali, it's hot. It's hot, bro. So just to be outside in the summertime. Fuck. fuck. It's hot. It's yeah, and, and over here, us in fucking AC, cars yeah. with AC blasting. Los vale, I still had to walk to school, but it was like, it was like a... Oh, right, I was spoiled as fuck. My, the school is... Oh, ten, you know, literally... It's a 10-minute walk. And then when my parents would leave early to go to work, I would take the fucking car to school. <laughs> like, you drove? I was like, yeah, if I just didn't want to walk today. Fuck it, it is what it is. My dad, te vas al carro. <laughs> so yeah, that. They would come with the extra key to come get the car and take it. I was like, 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 I no, my mom did. Your dad, mom did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah. Not my my dad only like if he was present in the argument or whatever. We got me and my sister got in trouble. Then yes, I met But he was more like I don't want to. I don't want to hit my. You know that is also just the the, the last straw, <laughs> like the, the bun. Like the, don't make me push the bun, bro. Because he le llama tu papá. It's like <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the it's like the final boss. Yeah, that's good, <laughs> like if if you're laughing. <laughs> Depending on the level, of the fuck up is when dad comes in. No, that's off my hand. Sorry, <laughs> even mom would step away. It's like no, you're, you're crying here, haciendo berrinche y todo, and your dad walks in and you just. <laughs> yeah, your mom is like, te dije? and then your dad enters. No, the worst thing, the worst thing is when you have you, you get in trouble and only your mom knows, and then your mm. dad doesn't know, and he walks in the door, and your mom just looks at you like, I can tell him at any moment, bro. Yeah, I they use it on you. Moment. It's like, the algo, the algo, the algo. Saca la basura. Hey, limpia los trastos. Yes, bro. So I creo, honestly. One question I really wanted to ask. Mm-hmm. You're off the bat, you are who you are. You're fucking Richard mm-hmm. Villa. Have you always been this person just straight up, up front? No. You're going to say how it is. No. Life makes you this. Life molds you into this person who you are. I am who I am because of the things that happened in my life that I was nice. I was naive. I was charismatic. I was, and, and it's not that I'm not, but... I'm also tired of the bullshit. You get to a point in your life and your career, you're going, well, fuck it. Let, let it run till the wheels fall off. It is what it is. I'll tell you this. I'm not chasing shit anymore. Mm. People chasing fame, people chasing clout. I'm not chasing shit. You know what I mean? My life is good right now. I'm happy. What I don't have is problems with millions of dollars. You know why? Because I don't have millions of dollars. I don't have those <laughs> fucking problems. My problems are... Hey, babe, how much is the credit card bill? All right, okay, we'll pay that. <laughs> that's my, you know, that's me. No baby yeah. mama drama. I don't have a, a side chick pregnant. Yeah. Hello, how's it going? Um, but, yeah, bro. For me, it's, it's I just keep it simple. And yeah. you, you have to, bro. You have to be transparent this time of day. If not, you're going to get caught up. Mm-hmm. My wife, they'll tell her, are you scared that your husband's going to cheat on you? And she goes, ah! <laughs> She laughs. She's let like, this do it, let him do it. <laughs> They're not fucking the plumber. They're not fucking the janitor. They're fucking Richard Rio. That bitch is going to use him for cloud. <laughs> you know who's telling me? She's fucking him. Her. You're the one telling me. You think these girls have any shame? They're going to fucking fuck you as a fucking hobby. <laughs> 
That's a fucking clown, oh, bitch. He's stupid. <laughs> My wife fucking calls stupid. Go. Whatever happens after that, you deserve it, pendejo. Go. <laughs> and would you say it is tough? It is tough to, like, for your wife to be in a relationship with a comedian? Oh, of course. But see, there's a difference. All right. She didn't come in with eyes closed. I didn't fool her. Like I said, I already had a failed marriage. I, more, I married a Border Patrol agent when I was 28. Oh, right. I, that 31, story. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. Can, can, can you still hook year. it up, though? Can you still hook it up or not? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I met my wife, I was ready to get married. I wanted to have a kid. I told her, I te va el rollo, mija. This is the deal. We will live together for one year. Mm-hmm. And in one year, you're 26, you'll be 27. I will let you go. If this shit doesn't work out, I can give you an answer if we're going to get married in one year. Because you're going to know what it's like to live with me. You know what it's like to live with a comedian. We're going to have day-to-day interactions. And after that, if you still say, fuck it, I'm in, then you're coming in with eyes full open, and you know what the fuck you're getting into. But I won't waste your time. Any other guy you date will fucking waste your time. I'm telling you right now, one year, I will give you an answer. She was like, done, let's do this. Damn. But she says, I have to talk to my dad. If my dad says no, because it's Mexican family, bro. We're getting moving in without oh, getting married. She. So she goes to her dad and says, dad, Richard said this, this, and this. Her dad said, I agree. <laughs> Fuck it. Do it. You know why? Because you don't know what it's like to be married to him. Until mm-hmm. you know what it's like to come at 3 in the morning and, and 4 in the morning where you don't know where he's at. He's traveling all over the world. Then you're going to know if this is the guy I want to marry. So good. Go live together for one year. We lived together for one year. And that year, I, I dude, I drove her crazy. <laughs> I went on tour. I did three military tours. So mm. I would go to Afghanistan, Kuwait, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Italy, the Bahamas. What I went all, all over the world. I would come in, drop my bags. She would wash my clothes, put it back in. I would just see her that night, fly back out. It was what just insane that, that year. That year, her family leaves, and the day she, that her family leaves, she was like, can we see my mom? All right, let's go. We go to the, to the funeral, the, the, the cemetery, and this whole time, her, her, her dad just had just left, and it was already a year, and I had not spent any money. I kept telling her, I have no money, I have no money. I'm doing charity events, charity events. And that day, she says, can you give flowers for my mom? It's like, I have no money. You have no money? What the fuck, dude? You have no money? Are you doing coke? Are you on drugs? Like, <laughs> six yeah. months been, and you have no fucking money, dude. Yeah. Like, when I first met you, you would spend money like crazy, and then all of a sudden, six months ago, and then my dad just left to Arizona. I have nobody here. I'm sticking with you. What the fuck is going on? She know that I already had the ring. The yeah. reason I have no fucking money, bitch, is I've been saving this really fucking expensive ring. Because I knew I had six months to go. Yeah. <laughs> I had an old 500 in his pocket, bro. So Shit. she's in the cemetery going, go get me some water for the flowers for my mom that I had to pay. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I put her ring in there. And says, is that enough water? You don't know how much water? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just started crying. And I told her, I wanted your mom to be the first one to know that I was going to marry you. Oh my god, you're not doing coke. No, I'm not doing coke. <laughs> doing coke. Not she was just worried about the coke, bro. <laughs> bro, because my lifestyle changed. It was like she never opened her purse. She never paid for anything to we can't go, babe. Sorry, I have no money. Yeah. But shit, rings aren't free. No, see the point is fifty cents in a maquinita, te sale uno, or if you go to the liquor store, you get the ring pop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Fuck, so you you did all of this. You pretended like you had no money to buy the ring yes. and to surprise her and be like, the hey, this her is... Family because I knew she wasn't leaving with... Like, her entire family picked up and all her brothers, everybody, everybody. their wives, their kids, they all left to Arizona. Yeah. The only person who stayed behind was her dead mother who was buried in Rose Hills. So she was staying behind, like, with me. So she didn't know what her future held. Yeah. And for... To see her, her future husband just go from being wealthy and spending to, we can't, we don't have no money. Sheesh. The fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. shit, I, do I stay here? Do I go to Arizona with my family? What did you tell yourself when you realized that your wife was going to stay back? Uh, um, no, I'm 
was like, yo. <laughs> I'm like, do you think it's not that way? Do you I'm over here thinking, I was like, yeah, man, you know, I don't deserve this type of love. <laughs> when it's like a, believe it or not, man, the reason we get married is a, is a business transaction. It's a business transaction. The reason that we did it back in the day was a business transaction to join the families, to join kingdoms, powers, armies, right? Yeah. Now you got to look at your spouse as your partner. Is this the kind of person I'm going to build the business with? Mm. Think about it. Do you want to bring in partners that spend a lot of money and don't know how to save it and aren't willing to work together to build a new business? Basically, that's what you're building. Yeah. Me and my wife became business partners in life. We really did. Because there's nobody in this fucking room that's going to take that right but her with me. None of you. I don't give a fuck how much we are friends. Motherfucker, you're not next to me wiping my ass. Do you understand? When I'm 65, she will be there wiping my ass and going, you know why? Because you deserve it, motherfucker. You rode with me. You didn't cheat on me. You were there for me. You were my partner. Fuck it. I'll wipe your ass. And vice versa. When she's sick, I'll wipe her ass. But that's the negotiation. you got to understand, is this crazy bitch with the big tits and big ass going to wipe my ass one day? Shit, she can't even reach her own ass. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck is she going to wipe my ass? <laughs> so don't look at it as your next wife is that. Look at it as a business partner. Yeah. That's it. So that, when I saw my wife, I saw this is a fucking great business decision. Yeah. And on top of that, there's love. Good. That's just a bonus. Because love can go away. Mm. But a good business partner won't. Ooh. Business is business, baby. Fucking bang. That has to be the most sweetest and rawest fucking answer of, of, of love like that. Like, I don't think we've ever got to explain that. There's no fakeness, though. Yeah. She knows that it's 50-50. She'll see the numbers and go, yeah, motherfucker. Okay, you pull your weight. Cool. Yeah. To ask her if she has to look at a price, a price tag. Anything she's told me, I said, babe, are you happy? Because I'm not famous. I told her, are you happy? Do I need to be famous for you to be happy? No. Since I've met you, see, you understand, we grew up in a very poor background, with poor families. She says, we've been married, babe. Since we've been married, I've never looked at a price tag when I go to the supermarket. When I grew up with my family, we always kept that in mind. Mm -hmm. But I live with you. You're my husband. We have a family, and we get what we need, not what we we can afford, you understand? We used to think differently, so my life has changed. I buy what I need. Yeah. I, no worries. What price is it? I don't know, but I need napkins. Damn. Wait, It's a different mentality, bro. Let's go, wait, how much is this napkin? How much is this napkin? And worried about 50 cents. Yeah. To, I need napkins. I need milk. You, you, no looking at prices. You just, you just said you're not famous. No. No, my ass. Famous like famous like fluffy famous. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah, but it, but if you if people look at at your say you like your resume of where you've been, where you've done shows, where oh, you've yeah. toured, and who you toured with, I'm that guy that you go, oh yeah, that guy, oh yeah, I've seen him, I've seen, I'm that guy, I'm that guy, the, the guy, guy, the guy we were talking about earlier. Really oh, but he has a joke about a booger. Oh my god, it's hilarious. I'm that guy. He has you know a pepito I'm joke. <laughs> I've opened up for everybody. I've worked with everybody. That's yeah. why I'm that guy. Um, if you, like, ask, people will ask me, hey, do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? And I go, you know it would be better? When you meet any comedian and you go, do you know Richard Villa? And he goes, yeah. That's more impressive. So when Ooh. you meet Dave Chappelle, when you meet Chris Rock, when you meet Fluffy, when you meet all of these guys, yeah. ask them, do you know Richard Villa? And if they go, yes, that's a bigger fucking flex. So why yeah. don't you ask them? You know me now. Yeah. Now go ask them. And you'll know how much how many people I know. Damn. If if Google is correct, you had a career before you went in you went into comedy. Yes. I was an engineer. A mechanical engineer. Oh my goodness. And I quit, bro. That shit is boring. <laughs> that shit is boring. That shit was boring. <laughs> school was great because it was every day a challenge. You had to pass this class. You had to deal yeah. with people. Hey, school was awesome. You could drink at the end, all that shit. <laughs> but like, why? Why? Once you get your water, but once you got out of school, you go to work. It's work, and then they say these are your employees. I ran a crew of like five, six guys, and we did semiconductor machinery. So I would yeah. come in with blueprints, and it was the same old shit. It was like the same machine, just smaller, same machine but bigger. Yeah. And so I got tired of it, man. I, I working as an engineer, I went to the Irvine Improv. Across from it was a yard house. Before, 
Mm. And I wouldn't, this is the thing that always amazes me. I had to graduate college, become an engineer to get a job in Irvine, to know that there was an open mic across the street from the yard house where I can perform. If that wouldn't have happened in my life, if I didn't graduate college, I would have never been in Irvine. Do you understand? There's no reason for a Mexican kid to be in Irvine. <laughs> Not at all. Why the fuck am I in Irvine? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Let's be either you're, no either you're playing a sport, <laughs> construction. I'm he, he's going to be like right now, bro. I white people. Yeah, <laughs> really. I know. So do you understand? So I understood what got me there was I had to go. It was part of destiny. Once I did that open mic at that uh, improv in Irvine, I got the bug, and it, I, I just said, fuck, the, the rush on stage can't compare to working here. I'm young, I can start again, I fucking quit. I was like, done, no kids, no families, I can quit, I'm 23. I quit, told my dad, I quit my job. My dad was like, that's pendejo, güey. You know how much you make, that's pendejo, mijo. I quit. Vas a contar chistes, to tell fucking joke, we're gonna tell that in Mexico. Ah. Hey, but your dad set you up for it. Yeah. <laughs> Making yeah, money for doing him. jokes. But well, you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you should have told Dad, you prepared me for this moment, and now I'm here. Yeah. Fuck, that, that's life in full circle right there. Pretty much. Yeah. But, um, but why, why as an engineer, why that career? I was great at math. It was, it was great. I had difficulties reading as a kid, less dyslexia, and then going from Mexico to the U.S. and you start fucking <laughs> go to ESL classes, and now you're back. Me as fuck, yo. No habla espanol, all that shit led to, fuck, dude. Math was really my strong suit, and I loved to do it, and drawing was my second love. So engineering and I know design, all that stuff was just like right there. And then new softwares were coming out that yeah. I got gravitated to at a very young age. It was like uh, AutoCAD. Uh -huh. So the computer and messing with AutoCAD really got my attention. That led me to engineering. I also worked for a company called um, Highshear. It's not there anymore in Torrance. And the guy there said, you're really smart at reading these blueprints. You should become an engineer. I never thought of it, but I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah. But then again, if you think about it, every Mexican parent's dream is for my son to be a doctor, uh, officer, oh, or, some, or an engineer. Algo que los va a sacar de la pobreza. And we did. I did. Congratulations. Here's your diploma. <laughs> He's like, now I'm going to be a comic. That was for them. Now, since I left the house, I left at 18. Mm. The thing is, I never asked my parents for anything either. At 18, I was at the house on my own. Never went back. You didn't get kicked out? Huh? They didn't kick you out? No, no, no. No, mm. you don't understand. <laughs> when you live with my dad, you wanted to get the fuck out. You don't understand, bro. My dad was not a fucking easy man to deal with. So that motherfucker was like, his foot was on your neck the entire time. You live in my house. These are my rules. You're like, fuck. So at 18, you get the fuck out. And you become a man, bro. And you, and you oh. see life and you tell life, oh, are you kidding me? My dad's worse. I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you struggle living at 18? Uh, no, because I came in that with, with that mentality of survival. Like, I got it. I got, I, there's no way I'm going back. There's no way I'm going back. So you just get stubborn and you find way. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you it was easy. I'm not gonna tell you I didn't starve. There was the moments where I couldn't fucking find a dime to rub together, but you, you work, that's life, bro. You understand that creates grit, that creates attitude, that creates balls. Like the fact that you can stand on your own two fucking feet and you own nobody, nothing. There's a sense of pride in that and creates character. So it, it made me mature quicker. It yeah. made me realize that, that nobody's there waiting for me to catch me, so fuck it. I got to do it my own. Yeah. Figure it out. And, and it, quickly. And I think that that's where this, this day and age is at. It's where it's at. It's, I'm expecting somebody to fucking come and hold my hand and lead me into what my life should be. And I think, bro, like at the end of the day, no one's going to fucking come. And then you call it depression because he didn't come. Yeah. Because you were waiting at home and you're like, when is the guy that's supposed to come here and help me, help me, me? In your house watching TV. <laughs> And you blame everybody else for not coming to help you. When you didn't even fucking call me to ask me to help you. Yeah. You just thought I was going to assume that I was going to go over there and fucking help you. Bro, nobody gets help if you go. Closed mouths don't get fucking fed. You understand these kids out there not only have that attitude, but are mad at you for not thinking of them. For not. Yeah. How dare you not fucking look after me? <laughs> I'm a grown fucking man. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that type of uh, rencor, it stays for years and months and... Now, fuck that person. He didn't help me when I needed it. 
Did you even fucking say you needed help? Yeah. Did you even ask? No, but you should. What the fuck? Shut the fuck <laughs> up, dude. But they, they hold it. Dude, there's people who go, he need to return my email. Who cares, bro? You don't know what the fuck he's going through. But you're not empathetic to the fact that his mom died. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, but oh, but you're hurt. You ain't calling me back. Yeah, motherfucker. But if you knew, oh, I didn't know. Well, but you were ready to call him a piece of shit. No, they did call him a piece oh, of okay. shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they still do. They throw every name out there, but they, creo que, like, I think the way I, I was thinking about it too is they'll drag you through the dirt first and then try to, oh, I'm so sorry. I had to put you. Th- what the? F- what are you sorry now? Yeah. But it's, it's people that don't even want to help themselves, bro. How, how can you be helped if you don't want to help yourself? Yeah, you, know? you have no, to. And this is the thing: if you're not careful, they will suck the fucking energy out of you, yeah. and they'll drag you down with you. If oh yeah, you don't know how to fucking recognize it. No, because right now, what's the thing that? Oh, yeah, you know what? I'll I'll help them out, and you keep dragging yourself in there. It's like, motherfucker, like stop! Like they're not helping themselves out. You're egging it on, and that's brother. That's brother, that's sister, that's cousin, that's your uncle, that's everybody around you. They don't have a, a certain label, you understand? Not just friends. Yeah. It's anything around you. I have friends that I tell them, look, motherfucker, if you want me to hang out with you again, I need to hear three positive things next time I see you. Mm. If not, I don't want to fucking talk to you, bro. Until you have three fucking positive things to tell me about your life, then we can talk. Because yeah. every time I fucking meet you, you come with a fucking sob story or some bullshit. And I have a bad fucking time too, but if I'm here, it's because I want to enjoy life yeah. and forget of my fucking problems, not Pretty hear much. yours. You understand? Yeah. Every yeah. time I call you, something happened. Like, I'm struggling right now, but I'm going to go hang out with you and not struggle with your yeah, shit. Like, no, nah, I'm is. Not my business. I'm not carrying it. Fuck you. Yeah. You understand? Tengo un problema. It's tough. Me too. That's it. Keep it fucking <laughs> rocking, bro. I didn't call you to fucking tell me your problems. No offense. There's therapy, there's all that shit. And I'm there for you once in a while. But you made it every fucking day. Yeah. It is draining. I can't stop. It is draining. Fuck you. Get the way. Get away. <laughs> I tried. I tried. And you still want to fucking act that way. Get the fuck out. That's it, bro. You have yeah. to. And I'm trying to implement on my son. I have my daughter, too. And my thing is, like, stop making excuses, bro. Yeah. You know, why aren't you successful? Like, especially we're in the social media game. Why aren't you relevant or why aren't you popping? Hey, like how many? How much time are you posting? How much time have you put into it? What kind of work have you been doing? What kind of creativity are you doing? Like some people, they have options. Mm-hmm. Where like, so if we explain it to our parents that we do social media, ¿qué es eso? Oh, no gastes tiempo en eso. Eso no te va a pagar. But I say, hey, like we could get to a point where you can actually get paid for recording and posting or whatever. But it's making. The thing is that to making us believe that we can do this, we believe it. Mm-hmm. It's getting to our parents, hey, believe that we can do this shit now. Yeah. You don't think I faced that back in 2000? Yeah, I want to. I, I, I want to. My dad, hey, dad, I'm going to do comedy. You don't think in his eyes he's looking like your dad's looking at you going like, are you stupid? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I, feel, I feel like they have so, like, um, what do you, how do you say this? Um, they have, like, so much inspiration or just the thought of you being something big that when you sell them this idea... Obviously, you know what you're getting into. You know, obviously, you knew that you were going to get into comedy. You mm-hmm. can make money off of comedy. But they don't see it like that. They see it as like, oh, you know, just something that you're never going to get paid of. They're scared. Yeah, yeah. They're exactly, scared. bro. It's fear. They're scared of you failing. And more than anything, if you have kids, they're scared of you failing with kids. Mm-hmm. See, my dad could live with the fact that let it get it out of his system. But when my dad saw me on television for the first time, I think it dawned on him. Did he cry? Like he, I was, I'm, I'm glad that my dad's attitude towards, it's so crazy, bro, because today is happening. This is happening. When I told my dad I was going to do comedy, my dad lost his shit. He says, eres un pendejo, güey. You're going to leave a good job to go do stupid jokes and just drink with your friends. That's what you're going to go do. That's really what you want to do. A few years later, like three years later, I run into a guy promoting a show, and it happened to be Luis de Alba, and he says, would you like to come help me promote it now, oh, which sure. on the show, and I get to, you don't understand, Luis de Alba, for my dad, was the iconic, com- like, like he was, th- there was nothing better than Luis de Alba. My dad would tell me as a kid, go to the video store, anything that Luis de Alba released, you bring it. Yeah. He was the biggest fan, he quoted Luis de Alba left and right, that was his hero. Mm-hmm. When I told my dad I was opening up the show with Luis de Alba in Teatro Los Pinos, mm-hmm. my dad lost it. He was like, ya, mijo, 
ya la armaste. Ya, yeah, amigo. Sí, sí. I mean, I, I was already at the, at the improv in Hollywood. Didn't give any fucks. No Did fucks you? giving. I, I was there with Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. I showed him pictures. Didn't care. The moment he knew I was going to open up for Luis de Alba, his attitude changed. He said, you made it. Did he apologize for what he had said earlier? Oh, or? fuck no. He never apologized. <laughs> He's like, fuck no. Mexicans had to apologize Wait, for so he didn't apologize. He was proud. He told you you made it. How the fuck did that make you feel? Because you left a career to start a passion that he didn't, didn't believe in it, right? Yes. What did I tell you in the beginning of this conversation? He was scared. Yeah. You cannot blame somebody for being scared and, and worry about you. Yeah. See, he was worried about me. He didn't, he didn't wish me bad luck. He just said, make better decisions. This is not the right one. I'm looking out for your best interest. That's what he saw it as. I think the fact that Luis Yalba now verified that I am a comic. And you got to understand, at this moment, I'm, I'm losing my dad, so he's going through dialysis. So he would go through these ladies now in dialysis, and he would go, Ira! and he would pick up his wheelchair and go, that's my son. He's a comedian. Now he would pass out my tickets. I was like, oh, shit. Now he believed in me. Hey. I was like, oh, fuck. Great. So having to work with Luis Alba and him giving me an opportunity to open up his show, my dad believed in me. Fast forward 2016. That happened then, right? 2016, I call Luis de Alba. And I tell him, Luis, I'm at the Ontario Improv. I want to do one weekend here. I want to start Spanish comedy in the US. I want to build it here. But I want you to help me. I have no money, but I have one weekend. And a manager, Clark, that believes in me. So are you willing to take a risk and come to the Ontario Improv? I'll promote the hell out of this show, but I cannot promise you any money. Yeah. Hijo, mi niño, ahí nos vemos. He showed up, not only did he sell out the Ontario Improv 5 show straight, they added a sixth one. Friday night, the manager said, we had to go to Costco and get liquor because he, we were drained out. Literally, Shit. everybody consumed every Corona, every Bud Light, every Coors Light. Everything was consumed God, that damn. night. After that weekend, they came to us and said, we got a tour for this man. In 2016, Mexico threw away Luis de Alba. When I asked around about Luis de Alba, people would laugh about this man. And go, Shit. ya se acabó, güey. Yeah. que estás reviviendo muertos, me decían. Fuck, puta madre. It was really fucked up how Mexico throws away somebody like Luis de Alba. But guess what? I picked him up, lo sacudí, and he told me, mijo, I still, I'm strong. I can still do this. And yes, he could. He was killing in 2016. And his career revamped. And now he had a 24-city tour with all the improvs. And because of that, a lot of guys like Carlos Vallarta, Franco Scami, a lot of these guys now get to do those improvs. Thanks to the path that that man had built over he at 73 mm. years old, still giving back and opening up fucking paths for these comics. But can you also say, and I you know, from this short time of, of knowing each other now and meeting each other, can you also say that his career re but it was to the thanks of the idea and and the grit that you had to like, hey, I got, this is it. Like, I got nothing else. This is going to be oh, it. Oh, what I had, it was a chip on my shoulder. Because two, three years prior to that, they kicked my show out. The Refry Comedy Show was the number one show for 10 years straight at the Hollywood Empire. Yes, sir. Yes, baby. <laughs> what happens? New management that didn't like me because they just didn't think it was up to par. To have yeah. so many goddamn Mexicans. In one on spot. Friday night. Yeah. He decided, we're going to cancel this show. We're better than this. Okay? So he cancels my show after 10 years. Now, we were doing great numbers. We were sold out almost every Friday night. When they do that to me, oh, you don't want these Mexicans that speak English to come here? Get a hold of this, motherfuckers. I'll be back. <laughs> I went to Mexico City looking for stand-up. And as soon as I found it, I brought it to the U.S., bro. At 2013, I started bringing people from Mexico City. I said, we're going to start Spanish comedy. But they, none of them had the big name to sell out, to make a difference, to, yeah. to move the needle. Till 2016, when Luis said yes. I was like, fuck it, we're doing this. And sure enough, bro, it exploded. Now, whenever you see a Spanish show, you can tell, especially in the West Coast, do you go, nah, I know who did it. And any improvs, why the fuck? I, even the improv on their 50th anniversary 
of being open. They asked the improv, what has been the biggest change in 50 years? And you know what their statement was? We never had to ask Spanish show or English show till now. Mm, fuck. So when Richard shit. showed up, now we had to ask, are you here for the Spanish show or the English show? See, now I'm going to make this shit a clip right here. Why the fuck did you have a chip on your shoulder? Because they kicked me out because they didn't like me there because I was Mexican. They thought that they could bring a better quality show. Mm. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not funny. Does that make sense? I don't think it's funny. It's not supposed to be for you. Look at the audience. Judge the show on the audience, not on what the fuck you think it's funny. Mm. I don't think this is up to part to the improv. Bitch, it's not up to you. Look at the people laughing. Yeah. That's what I'm catering to. Well, we like the improv to be a certain level. Fuck you. You know what I mean? That was my chip on my shoulder. You kicked me out because you just didn't understand it. Yeah. You didn't find the value in it. You don't understand. Nobody from Pico Rivera, Downey, Southgate, South Central goes to the improv until the fucking refry shows there. Why else would the fuck we would go to Hollywood to a fucking <laughs> shitty bar? That's how you said earlier. Why the fuck who would it be in Irvine? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You understand? But they didn't want us there. That's why they took the show out. The yeah. guy who was there didn't want that show there because yeah. he didn't want those people there. Yeah. That is it. How do you, dude, I know club owners don't bullshit me. We have a, a, a dark night, a black night. You know what I mean? Like, they know, like, oh, no, we, we don't. You, you, a, a, black rappers will know this. Black rappers go into a bar, and you tell them you're going to put on a rap concert. The bar owner will go, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. I can fucking sell this place out. I don't care. I'd rather not make the money. Go away. They do that all the time, bro. Why wouldn't they do it to come? So... That's why I came back. Oh, you don't want Chicanos here? Well, guess what? I'm bringing Latinos. Full Spanish now, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make it worse for you now. Yeah, and it, ha- dude, it, and it has it. Not, not worse, but I think now they understand the value of money. And they go, yeah, there is a market that we're not tapping. That, that's, what does it say? If you can't understand no language or you can't see no color, you can only see green. Yeah. You can understand green. We're money just talks, discussing bro. that. Yeah. They'll like, hang out with you if you have money. Yeah, if you have hey, it, What did uh, Mike say? It's it's there is a price to play. You gotta pay to play. You gotta pay, yeah. Yeah. You gotta pay, you gotta to, pay play. to play. Like it doesn't matter. You could be fucked up shoes and at least some fucking jeans, a plank shirt that cost you five dollars. But if you have a, a chain that looks like it's fucking real, ten thousand, oh they'll accept you. If you look like the the part, they'll accept you. But in reality is like some people, how we said you said it right at the beginning. You could fake it as much as you fucking want. But in the day and age that we're in, hey, you're going to get called out on that shit right away. And if they meet you in person, they know you're not this motherfucker. You can, that, I think that's why right now where this time is, you get judged so fast because you're real. You're yourself. And they don't like you because you don't give a fuck about their feelings. I'm sorry. I got a lot to deal with I myself. I control how you take my shit. Yeah, I, I got a lot to deal with myself. Why the fuck am I going to worry about you? I can help you if you want me to, but if you don't want, like, if you're not ready for it, okay, I'm not going to waste my fucking time, my energy. I could put that into either my business now, or somebody else. The way you're talking to me offends me now. And I feel so bad. And I can't believe you said that to me. Do you understand? That's the reaction you're going to get to the people that you're talking to. Because they are so sensitive because they still, in their mind, they still think you're I, I fucking feel, with them. I just, I just want to go now. Yeah. I'm just, just, yeah. Just, yeah. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what the fuck, dog? Like, again, there, there's a certain way to talk to people. And what, right now, off a of camera, I was telling you, like, I, I coach kids. I coach high school kids that are high, school, high schoolers right now believe and know, think, the way they act, that they're adults, full-grown adults. Okay, well, if you're going to act like an adult, you're going to get the repercussions as you're an adult. Treated as an you're going to get treated as an adult. Not, oh, but I'm just a kid. No, 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 no. You can't pull that car. You can't pull that car now. You're going to get the same treatment. So if you disrespect it, if you, if you miss this, all right, you're going to get the repercussions. I don't give a fuck how good you are. How do we change it? Now, we know that. that, that how do we change it? Because I have a solution, but I want to know if you have a solution. How do we change this attitude and this, this misconception that our kids or our youth have now that, that mm. shit is owed to them? How do we change that? I really want to hear this. Because, I mean, I'm not 
I'm not too far from their age either, you know? Like, I really want to hear this. Kids, right? Yeah, I got kids. No, I don't know. Well, de lo that he knows say, of? That he knows of? I, we don't know yet. No. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Perdidos, but I Yeah. Hey, hey, Dylan, that fool looks like you, dude. What the <laughs> fuck? I'm going to get a knock on my door later on. Like, daddy? Shit. Like, hey, yo. What did I tell you? You cannot hide shit. <laughs> so, this is your son right here, bro. Yeah, um. 21 and me, and then you're. 21 and your daughter. You found your daughter. You found your son. No, no, Reunited no, no, no. with his dad. <laughs> oh, yo. That's a great yo. podcast. That's a great podcast. I'm like, I'm like, like al menos tienes papeles, güey. Al menos tienes papeles, güey. <laughs> the old anchor, baby. You won't have to leave the country anymore. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, that's, that's awesome. the solution. Hold on. Let me, let me no, text her. You want to have a kid? You, you don't know this, but he's been trying to fight me and get down with me because he wants to use that in his court case that he got yeah, beat yeah. up by me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now he's, if he's getting abused, yeah, that is. I'll, get, I'll get done with this for any day. Exactly. Why do you think he's <laughs> drinking what he's drinking? Hell yeah. Bro, you, give me, you give me two Four Locos? Bro. bro. Yeah, I don't see you as my, my brother anymore. I'll <laughs> suck the oh. fuck out of you. <laughs> hey, Richard, um, do you have space in your car for to leave? Because <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> um, how do you change this? I think the way I've been with my kids and even with the high school kids is I'm going to tell you how it is. If it hurts you, if you feel some type of way after this, I, I, I don't care. I need to tell you the truth and I need to teach and I, I need to give you the repercussions of what you just did. Because when we grew up, we got the repercussions. And yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Like our parents tried their best to save us from the repercussions of what life was. They taught it. They tried to teach us and they tried to tell us if you make that decision, you're going to get this. My thing is like, bro, if you're going to do this right now, whatever action right now, we're talking my son is three. That f- he's trying to learn T-ball and it's like, all right, I just because you don't want to show up today doesn't mean you're going to get a pass. You got to show up. Like, if you committed to this, you're going to commit full on. If you're going to be this route and think you're going to get out of the repercussion, I'm sorry. You're going to suffer the repercussion. I don't give a fuck if after this you fucking cry. My dad, my dad was a very tough, tough man. Like to the point where we had to have a discussion as grown men. And I asked him, Ooh. why were you such an asshole? Like, why were you such a piece of shit, man? Yeah. Like growing up, you couldn't let us breathe. I couldn't cut my hair how I wanted to cut my hair. You fucking micromanaged our clothing. You were always on our fucking ass and you wouldn't cut us a fucking break. You wouldn't give us an inch. I was working, going to college full time, both. I crashed and you fucking wailed on me. And you fucking, why were you such a dick? And my dad answers this, I, I, that's the only way I knew. Do you understand? Like, I, what I didn't know is that if, if I didn't put my foot on your neck, and if I wasn't always present to be on your ass, yeah. the outside world was gonna consume you. And my lack of education can only allow me to use force to manage you. But thanks to that, look at where you're at now. Mm-hmm. And if that means you're going to hate me, so be it. Then hate. Yeah. That's a price I was willing to pay as a father. I'm willing to be hated, but I won't let them consume him. I, think that- I feel like that's um, what they call is tough love. That's the only way he knew how to show love to you. Well, that's the only way they even knew. Because that's how they were taught. Yeah, yeah that, pretty much. Like, that's the thing. Like, because, I mean, now if you hit your kid, oh, you're getting, you're getting reported right away. You're getting reported? Wait, wait, listen, this is, <laughs> uh, you this, get, <laughs> what he said, I was there. Yeah. And that's the problem, guys. See, he, didn't, he did it the wrong way, but he was still there. Yeah. That's what people don't understand. People say, what happened to you in your, as your childhood selling coke with your dad? That was child abuse. No, bitch. I had a dad in Compton in 1988. I was a unicorn. I was special. And my dad had a job. He sold crack to your dad. You understand? <laughs> like, like, you call that abuse, motherfucker? My dad was present every day. We talked every day. We talked about man shit every day. But yeah. he was there to guide me, man. He, was he an asshole? Yes. Was he abusive? Yes. Did we sell coke? Yes. But he was there. Mm. He was still a present dad. And that's the thing. You don't need money to be a good dad. You just need to be there. Yeah. Everybody can be a dad, but no one. It takes a certain person that's present to be a father. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because then you get those, those bonus ones. And those bonus dads become fathers and the father figure. We don't say, oh, that's a dad figure. No, we always say it's a father figure. Why is that? How you said, 
as fucked up as they may have done shit, as fucked up as they treated us or abusive as they were verbally or physically, or whatever, he was there, fucking there. there. Mm-hmm. As after they beat your ass, hey, mijo, vente pa acá. No, he's a. ¿Quién te quiere, cabrón? Vente pa acá. Mijo, you want to know what a man is? Go to the refrigerator. What do you see? Beer. A six pack. <laughs> no, pendejo, behind the six pack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, a gallon of milk. There you go, cabrón. First, take care of your family, and then there's enough. You can buy oh, your fuck. six pack. Yeah, not. Like little things like that. And you're <laughs> six. You're like, and then he was like, now go get me a beer. <laughs> for for <laughs> our audience, there, just give me a beer. for the audience that. That haven't haven't heard of this. You just said you sold crack when you're dead. Yeah. No, he didn't sell crack. No, well, <laughs> no, I didn't sell crack. I didn't sell crack. <laughs> no, it's okay. Everybody's dead. You don't have to call the cops. This is not something He's like, you mijo, can look mijo. it up. He's like, mijo, do, de, dos casas de aquí. Ahí yeah. se la das y ahí me arreglo con él. No, corre. No, you know, when we came back from Mexicali, it was because in '88 the Mexico economy took a big shit, and my dad was basically fucked out of his business. He had opened up a conasupo. So we came back to the U.S. We ended up in Compton, California. And, uh, you know, it's tough. You have no papers. You have fucking four kids, a wife, all this shit to do. So his uncle, his cousin Ricky was like, hey, dude, you want a slang? Get you a house, get you this. My dad's like, fuck it. American dreams. (laughs) Whatever it takes, bro. It's so funny because people would ask me, what was your mom in this? And I go, What's wrong with you? You think anybody had a fucking say in what was going on? <laughs> you think my mom would go, Chipila Zacatecas would go, listen, I think we should, dude, he would have punched her in the face. <laughs> you understand? You would have got her ass full. Like, just took quite a step back in the back. Like, you bitch. <laughs> like, we're, and then, you know what I mean? Like, what fucking social services? Do you think my mom didn't speak any fucking English with four kids? Where does she run away to? Child services, no they pull up. <laughs> ah, 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 <laughs> but the boss of you, your mom should have said something. Yeah, she would have been dead, bitch. No. <laughs> you understand? This is not the, the wrong fucking people to talk to. So how do you start your first business? It's your family. So, dude, I became the translator. My uncle Hugo was a, a crackhead. His brother was a crackhead, so because my dad didn't speak English, he would give cracks to my uncle Hugo. Orale, they left all the way. Tell everybody that's yeah, the marketing that department. That. She would go out and tell all the crackheads, "Hey, bro, we sell crack over here." And my, <laughs> and my mom was cook it up. She would cook it up, except we couldn't lick the spoon at the end. It was like making cookies, but you can't fuck with the spoon. No, pues estaba estaba pilas, güey. Hell yeah. Oh, wait, we would crack. At school, everybody is so surprised. How do you know the metric system? <laughs> How do you know the metric system? If I got it wrong, I'll fucking kick my ass. <laughs> I had to convert kilos to grams. Grams fucking 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 Mother, hey, what, what do you think I became an engineer? I'm good at math. <laughs> hey, what do you have a lot of little baggies in your, in your backpack, bro? <laughs> hey, I'm a, I'm a mobile business, bro. So we opened up a candy store because we had so much foot traffic. <laughs> I'm serious. No so, way. So, yeah. Look. I visited Wait, at your house? Home. No, yeah, my house in Compton. Like, if you if you still go back, I went and I visited maybe a year and a half ago, uh-huh. a year ago. Yeah, I went to Compton. I went to my old house in Compton, and there was a, a young lady coming into the house. I said, "You live here?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Yeah." I said, "You live in the front house?" She says, "Yeah." Is is that made out of metal? She's like, "Yeah." How do you know? <laughs> my dad built it. My dad built it. <laughs> <laughs> so we wouldn't get shot anymore, dude. Like, so he built a like a fortress in front of the porch, and it had a window. Still has a window, and it was a sliding window, and they would slide it open. It had bars, and then kids would come in buy candy. So we would disguise the crack selling as it's a candy, candy store. Ah, también le vendían a los niños hijos. No, no, no. The kids were the worst fucking customers. They wanted candy, and they're like, "How much is that? How much?" There's a crackhead behind him. Here we are, motherfucker! I'm gonna crack. He's like, "I just do that. Pull the crack, bro. This one's for crack. This one's for candy. Come on." <laughs> Bro, because the, the cracks are easy. Crackheads are easy, bro. You like, needed, boom, boom, you boom, needed boom. A security in the front to kind of just <laughs> to distribute the light. Hey, well, you go there. Yeah, yeah. No, you go there. Yeah, bro. Then fucking the, 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 the cracker was just like. We made money in Compton. Damn, you're a business owner. <laughs> oh, bro, the hustle was always there. We get knocks in the door. You know, crackheads will come to the door, right? Three in the morning. And we would hear the, the, cra- the, the, the door the knocks, being yeah. caught, knocked. And we would run because whoever got there, sometimes we had a bike. We were waiting for the Nintendo. Mm. See, the Nintendo had just come out. So we knew one of Wait, these the crack hits. No, the first Nintendo ever oh, in 88. We were selling crack in 88. So 
the Nintendo was announced already. So it was just a matter of time before a crackhead came to our house with a Nintendo. So I was 10, my brother was 11 or 12, and we knew this shit, so we knew. Man, you, we gotta stay digital. We gotta stay up, bro, because when the crackheads come, I don't want my dad turning him away, not knowing what the fuck a Nintendo is. So do you understand? We were gonna negotiate. We, we, we had man, I'm like, I'm like, was a businessman. No, bro, I wanted a Nintendo 10, so we knew we had to stay up. So we would stay up, bro, just waiting for and Nintendo. Nintendo came, bro. The gun oh, and Super no. Mario Brothers, the gun and the two controllers. He came without the gu- the game. And he said, no, nope, there's a game. No. <laughs> Go get the game. <laughs> he came, he, I don't know who he got that game from, but bro, he came back with the game. Bro, or some shit, bro. No, there's no Curaçao back then, bro. It was oh, probably his No, the Curaçao, the, Cura, the, the Curaçao was a, was it ten probably like 10 years ago, but it was a, like... The modern fucking story is gonna fuck you over with thirty yeah. percent interest. Hey, that's promotions. <laughs> y, y todos estos pinches. Agarran su televisión yeah. por $10.99. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 0% and then first. you get there, you sign. 30% for the next 10 years. Yeah. How does that sound? But I can take it home today? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know how much I paid for my PS4, bro? Probably like 10, 10 times what it was worth. Bro, I paid seven hundred thirty. <laughs> I was a dumbass. See, I mean, my parents were like, vamos a la cosa, si, si lo quieres en pagos, ahí te lo agarran, en cre- tu crédito no importa. Bro, Mexican shit, you know? I was like, hell yeah, like, fuck it, let's go. Bro, they just fucked me over. Up that you <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> fucked me over, homeboy. I was like, hey, hell you, no. you don't have credit established? <sighs> just fine right here. You're fine. You're in your yeah, building. Okay. You got papers? No. You got credit? No. <laughs> <laughs> you're perfect. <laughs> perfect, dumbboy. <laughs> but you're real, right? <laughs> so there you go. Oh, shit. You, you said earlier, man, and, and this just little little highlights of of your life that a lot of people have heard. But you said your first marriage, you mar- you married a border patrol agent. Yeah, uh, yeah, dude. When they're not wearing uniforms, they look like regular people. They look like regular human beings. <laughs> they look like white material. I'm in the look. I'm in the lookout. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, bro, you'd be surprised how many are out there with our border patrol. No. <laughs> You know, I met her in an event in Old Central California, and um, we just hit it off. It was just like, uh, at this moment, my dad was passing away, and I felt it was a little unfair that he didn't get to see my kids. Yeah. And it was a selfish reason why I got married. I was like, I just want to have a kid, and I want my dad to see his grandkid. And all my other brothers had kids, except for me, because I was fucking around doing comedy. And so I decided at 28, my career was Blowing up, I had multiple TV shows, I had a writing gig, I, had, I was making really good money, and I said, this is the moment, so I picked the girl, literally, just for that reason, I said, I'll learn to love her, I guess, but you realize that, man, I mean, that to, to be a, a Border Patrol agent, to be a, a sheriff, and work in the prison systems, like, you have to be a certain person, Yeah, a cop is a cop, because that's the way he has to be to survive out there, and and I understand you have to be tough and you have to be a bitch and all that, but I also don't have to take it. Does mm, that make sense? Yeah. So it didn't work out in, 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 in one year we were done. And I was like, I'm out. I just, half, I just couldn't, man. Took half your shit, huh? Yeah, it took everything. I left with two trash bags and a pickup truck. That's it. I was like, I'm out. Because I could rebuild it. I could do it again. Yeah. I could do it again. And that's why my second marriage, I was like, nope, this is a business <laughs> transaction. <laughs> Like, I know how this is. Like, this is like, a different one here. I, I lost my first business. He was like, I know what I came in with, yeah. and man, I'm not leaving with that again. Nope. I told my wife, listen, if you don't let me go find that motherfucker, bring him over here. We're all going to live together, bitch. I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I pay for this couch. I'm willing to share it, but I'm not giving it away anymore. <laughs> I'm willing to be roommates. That's it. However, you, however you look at that. As long as he has milk in the fridge, we good. <laughs> man, you went through a life and a half, even before... Like, everybody, I, I, this is what's crazy. Everybody that has been a fan of comedy and has been a fan of, of watching you now haven't really seen everything it took to get to this point that you are right now. Mm-hmm. Like, right now, I, I, I would say, and, I, and maybe you can agree or not agree, it's up to you, however you feel. <laughs> <laughs> but comedians right now, uh, Latinos, Hispanics, and other races, like, right now, comedy is, like, a trend where everything is just, everybody's watching comedy on YouTube, shorts, TikTok, IG, it's going. It's happening because comedians are now letting go of their material. They realize that. Me and my brother were discussing this. Even musicians. 
Every month, there's a new song from your artist. Yeah. Why is that? Because we're consuming this shit so fast that if you are not on top of it and you don't grab my attention, I'm gonna, I'm not loyal to you. I'm gonna go over here. Those days of I have my fans forever are gone, dude. It's David Peso Pluma. Give it this year. Next year, we forget about him. Just like you're forgetting about your artist this quick. Why? Because you constantly have to produce music as a stand-up comedian. The beauty of me, 22 years into this, me and my brother sat there the other day, and we're just coming up with premises. And you're like, fuck, bro, you're just writing joke after joke after joke after joke. Okay, let's go record it. And we literally tried it as a science experiment. Now go do all these jokes. Brrr, fuck, look at all the hits. Fucking great. Are you going to use them again? No. Nope. Never going to use them again. Fuck them. Let them burn you let it go. You just need to keep the machine, keep feeding the machine. Why I didn't do it before until my brother came here? Because you judge yourself and go, I'm not going to put it up. And it's really tough for you to put up a video and not get a hit. Mm. And now you take it personal and you go, fuck, I suck, bro. Nobody watched it. Yeah. So you stop posting shit. That's why you have to have a third party. My brother goes, I don't give a fuck. It's not my clip. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it up. <laughs> if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. But at least it's not in my head. You understand? I don't take it personal anymore. So that's why I have to have him upload all this shit. But you have to now. The, all the comedians are now dumping their material. Because there is no more radio. There is no more television. We used to go to morning shows to promote our stand-up shows on the weekend. Nobody listens to the radio. I don't. Anymore. I don't. I don't remember the last time I heard the radio. Like I listened to the just radio. Just want to turn on the car <laughs> before go. my Bluetooth connects. Exactly. Like, do you understand? I just yeah. thought about that. Honestly, I just I don't remember the last time I no. like, listened to the radio. So, for all the uh, influencers, all the people that, and I was asking you, how do you revenue income yeah. here? Start using your platforms as a hub for comedians, for actors, for actresses, for singers to come and promote the events that they're coming to do in your city. I really think that's the next step. Whatever you were paying the radio to advertise you coming into their city, now pay influencers that are local heroes, local guys that have half a million, two million. Those people will get to their people right away, and they can give them an honest opinion of the show or the person. Go, you know what, guys, bottom, this guy, no, but he's paying me, but I'm letting you know I'm willing to do it because he's hilarious, my yeah. recommendations. That's going to be worth more than a fucking radio spot now. So we don't have to sell crack? No, no, no. <laughs> so you might sell your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's so good. That's a if Joe Rogan called Don Cheto, Don Cheto wouldn't say, hey, makeup, get here. <laughs> yeah, his numbers are going down. Going up, that, that's, that's, the, that's that part, though. It's just when you're coming up, no one like, ah, to go there. But as soon as they start don't take seeing, it personal, though. no, definitely don't. No, no, we, no, no, really don't. we really definitely don't. don't. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. Now, fool, they don't believe in me, fool. You know? <laughs> yeah, like that. Man, that's great. If you don't believe, it's okay, fool. Yeah. But you'll come back. You'll come back. You'll come back. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's uh, how we we're talking about earlier. The game here is longevity and consistency. Mm -hmm. Can you do it every week? Can you do it monthly? Can you do it yearly and still keep going? Even if you don't have the result you fucking wanted or anticipated, anybody that comes into any sort of, you think you're gonna get the fucking payback? Immediatamente. Motherfucker, it might take a year, it might take two years, it might, whatever it takes. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're right. You're, you were gonna say something? No, 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 no. No, he's still thinking about the kids that he thinks he doesn't have. He's like, did I use protection? <laughs> he's that like, day? No, damn, that's what did look like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. This is the thing is, and, I, and, and it's not for everybody, but find something you love to do, and then, as cliche as it sounds, but you really wouldn't mind. Yeah. It didn't work, doesn't fucking matter. You think I get pissed off that, ah, oh, I'm not famous? Bro, I get to go perform, tell dick and ass jokes. When I get home, I get to chill, fucking smoke weed, write jokes, watch TV, and then get ready for the night, and then do another fucking show. Yeah. That's my life, bro. I don't dig ditches. I don't fucking... Work for a factory. I don't have the clock in. The days I don't want to go to work, I tell them I don't feel like going to work, and that's it. But I understand that I'm not going to get paid. Yeah, that's it. Whatever the fuck you want to do in life, go do it. And and you say, well, uh, my circumstances. Well, motherfucker, that led you there. Do you understand? Like, I'm sorry. Like you, yeah. you. We all have one ch chance at life. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But you wanted the pussy right now, and now you got a kid. Well, there you go, motherfucker. There's a nerdy motherfucker right now, rich as fuck. Fucking program and coded some shit, and now his fucking supermodels on his yacht. But that motherfucker waited. 
But no, you wanted to fuck at 17, so boom, now you have a kid. Guess what? You made your choices. It's okay. That doesn't mean you have to stay there, though. That doesn't mean you have to stay there. But recognize you made your fucking choices. Now make the right choices to get the fuck out of that hole and then go follow your dream. But first get the fuck out of that hole. What am I talking about? Raise your fucking kid. This is not a fucking call for you to leave your family and go find yourself. No, no, that's a piece of shit coward. You fucked up. Take care of your kids. Take care of your family. Once those are done, start working little by little on building your fucking future. Now, you want to write a book? Get up at four. That's it. Guess what? Because you fucked up. You know who was getting up at four? That nerdy motherfucker that waited for pussy. He was getting up at four to do his homework, to learn how to fucking do what he fucking does now. Now he gets to fuck models. He gets up at three now. In the afternoon. But you have to get up at four if you want to follow your dreams. That's it, bro. I'm sorry. I'm hey, sorry. I, I, I thought we were saving the quote of the day for like at the end. That shit came now. Bro, shit. but I'm sorry. Why do people have to make it complicated? You yeah. fucked up. Fix your shit. Follow your dreams. It's porque they want, they want the answer and they want it nice. They want, it, they want you to tell them the answer very, very, you know, conservative. Ah, okay. Yeah, like, hey, please tell me in a nicer way. If I too mad, he's like, hey, but it, it's true. Like, if I tell you, hey, bro, I think you just need to work harder. You're gonna be like, ah, this fucking clown, hey, motherfucker. If yeah. you're fucking up, get your shit. To- you fucked up. Yeah, Look, honestly, tu andabas a puto way. I know because yeah. I was there at 17, at 16. Even my brother said when I was 19 and fucking around going to college, he says, listen, bro, you can fuck around and miss school and hang out with your boys here on Wednesday nights at Gage Bowl. Facts. That's one way of entertainment. Or you can go to school, get your shit straight, and then go on the weekends with your family and your sea dudes and go to fucking a, a nice cabin and fucking spend some baller shit instead of just doing the fucking Wednesday nights at Gage Bowl. Because Gage Bowl will still be here. Bro, it's because everybody, everybody thinks and believes that they don't need to work hard in order to play play. Like that. There was a there was a quote on TikTok. This is like, creo que ya lleva el año. If you want to spend without looking at your bank account, you got to work without looking at the clock. Especially if you're going to do a business, follow your passion. Hey, motherfucker, do I work with my dad? Yes, this episode is sponsored by JLV Pest Control, dog. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Of course. But I'm, that is, right now, it's my career. Uh-huh. But my career is paving and paying the way for my passion. Yeah. Which is this. If you're, how you said, you just said right now, your passion, you're going to do that shit for free no matter what. Exactly. It, um, uh, Steve Harvey said it, bro, like your gift will, will pave the way, bro. No matter how you look at it, no matter what you do. But that doesn't give you an excuse because you're following your dream that you don't take care of your three-year-old kid. No, definitely you not. You understand? No, definitely so not. You understand that pest control has to fucking be a part of this. Exactly. And so this can provide for that. Bro, yesterday we were up to like three in the morning. Why? Because we needed to edit and get ready for... Monday. Yeah. We don't miss fucking Monday. We and we never made an excuse. No matter what happens. Oh, you're you you miss sleep? Oh, que pobrecito. Oh, you're crudo. Oh, who gives a fuck? Get up. Hey, yeah. the the person listening and waiting doesn't give a fuck about what you did the day before. Yeah. If you miss it, they're just gonna look like ah, oh, that was a phony day. I say what about it. They got this, bro. Is he needs you and this podcast to get through Monday? Yeah. Yeah. Do you mm. understand? He shows up Monday morning. He mm. turns on his Spotify and goes, "Hijos de su puta madre." O sea, Ahora que voy a escuchar. What am I going to hear now? I was planning on my first hour at work listening to these pendejos, but now, fuck. So let me let me ask you a, a question. Throughout your career of comedy, what was one of your toughest moments? Toughest moments. Toughest moments. It doesn't uh, have to be through comedy. Like anywhere in your life, too. Um, toughest moments. Toughest moments. I think the fact that you give up time for this career, that's the toughest thing you, it's not one moment, it's multiple moments, but the one that made me realize how important time was, the first Father's Day, my first Father's Day. And I'm so glad I had a comedian next to me to laugh at me as I was fucking at the airport. (laughs) And I'm crying on the phone talking to my little girl. They had prepared a whole celebration for me for my first Father's Day. And I was like, shit, the only thing I always wanted to do a good job at was being a dad. Yeah. Like, I always wanted that job. Like what you said, would you do it for free? Yes. Being a dad was the job that I applied for that I really wanted to get. And when I got it, 
I couldn't wait to be the best at it. And so missing my first Father's Day broke me, dude. I'm crying at the airport, and the comedian friend of mine is just busting my balls. And he said, is that how much it's worth to not spend with? Is that how much I need to pay you so you don't spend time with your daughter? And they just stabbed me in the fucking heart because I had made $750 that day. It says, for $750, you, you gave up time with your daughter. I'll pay you that. I was like, damn. You know, I was like, you motherfucker. And that's it. After that, I, I never did it again. I said, no Father's Day. No, no. Her birthday's on the 15th of September. That's the hottest fucking common fucking night. And it's blacked out on my calendar. I will never perform those days. Not her birthday, not Father's Day. Ever. 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 I don't give a fuck who's performing or what they're asking. That day is sacred. That's it. Why? Because I'd rather lose those jobs. Then lose that time. Damn, that's like it goes into that that question. Like, what are you, what are you willing to sacrifice in order to make your career successful? Not that, mm. not that, not that. See, because at the end of the day, everybody could hate me. We live in a world where tomorrow my legacy gets destroyed because somebody gets curious and they want to dig and, and rephrase the things just so they can have clout. Jenny Rivera specials are coming, trust me. All of these artists, Pedro Infante specials, como he was a masochist and he raped these four 14 year olds. Pedro Infante, where they're making videos of Pedro Infante dating 14 year olds. Where back in the day, the dad would come and say, ya aquí tiene mi hija, señor, por favor, casese con ella. At 14, you could get married back then. Do you understand? But now they're crucifying him, saying, look, Pedro, you see, understand? Your legacy will always be get tarnished by somebody else that wants to make their own fucking legacy. Do you understand? Yeah. You know what never gets tarnished? The fact that my daughter will say, I don't give a fuck what you guys say. He was different. You can mm. say he was this, he was this, but for me, he was the best dad in the world. He did this and this and this. So fuck you, whatever you think, this is what I think of him. And for, for people that don't know, because you're talking about your legacy and, and you don't give a fuck if anybody says anything. Your legacy and your name was tarnished yes. for, for a good amount of time. Yes. Because you went, you went, at, <laughs> you made a, you, you had like, um, you had a head to head with a certain person mm -hmm. and your name just got dragged after that. Yeah, because there was nothing else to do. Yeah. Because that was the entertaining Part of it. What happened was a roast. Yeah. And when I did the roast, um, Mexico, especially Mexico, this was in Spanish. And I'm not saying I wasn't drunk, but a lot of people don't understand. Look, you've been doing this for 20 years, and that's that's my situation. Sorry. I've been I've been I've been doing this for 20 years, and then COVID hit. I flew in from a sold out show in Guatemala, and my manager gives me a call and says, "Your Latin American tour is canceled." What are you talking about, bro? COVID hit. All the clubs, all your dates are canceled for this year. What are you talking about? We don't know what's going to happen. So yeah. this happens in March. September of that year, we're talking about maybe what, six, seven months after yeah. I was out. The first month, my wife said, you know what? Enjoy yourself. You haven't taken a break in 20 years. Maybe it's a sign you should just fucking chill. Yeah. So what do I do? I stay home. Everything's great. But you understand, money's going out. The only way I make money is if I have live events. You got to tell a joke. <laughs> I got to tell a joke. So money is just coming out, 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 out. And with that comes fucking, you're depressed, dude. You start drinking. I started chugging up a bottle of vodka a day. Tito's, a yeah. bottle of vodka. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Tito, no, that's right. No. <laughs> just fucking, no, no, no. a bottle of vodka, one liter a day. I would, I still know my routine. I would go to the liquor store in the morning. I'd get my bottle, my one fucking two liter of fucking tonic and weed, and I would smoke and write jokes that I thought someday I was going to say. Damn. And then I would write the jokes because I was watching the news because that's all I had to do, smoke weed and drink all day. And I would write these jokes, and then they say, no, it's not true. And I go, fuck, well, I guess fuck this joke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because everything kept changing. Everything yeah. kept changing. So I get a call, and they, and they were like, do you want to participate in this roast? Now, keep in mind, this roast, the guy that's running it, 8.9 million people in Latin America see this. So because I knew I was performing that day, that doesn't mean I stopped being depressed or I stopped drinking a bottle of vodka. No, you're I, bought good. You're, you're... I bought two. 
I, I buy two bottles of vodka. Because she can get some high <laughs> I bought two because special it's a special event. Night. Special oh, yeah. event. Yeah, it's, yeah. It is. it's celebration. Because I know by 8 o'clock I'm fucking blackout drunk, so I need to stay longer than that, so I need to drink more. So I continued to drink, and I jumped into the second bottle. By then, they put me on air live, and nobody's out, you understand? Everybody's at home. That's why 8.9 million people are watching this. Yeah. And I'm, I, I had prepared a rap song. I had prepared all this stuff, and we're supposed to roast each other. And when I start doing the roast, I'm drunk out of my ass and I'm cursing this girl out. And I'm not saying it was funny, but obviously I'm drunk and it's a roast. So I didn't take it that serious because I thought even if I fuck up, all that happens is I lose and that's it. Yeah. Right? It's a roast. It's a battle. You can yeah. say whatever the fuck you want. So I did. And I called her a puta on the fucking show. And everybody's like... <gasps> I was like, oh, shut the fuck up. All of you guys talk worse than this shit. But no, because they wanted to be almighty more than me. They were like, no, I can't believe he said that. And everybody got offended. And everybody went after me. And everybody. The girl that I offended. And you can look this up. Yeah. And I hope you guys do your research. Her first television show on Netflix is me. Her first shows here in the U.S. is because of me. The first HBO she did in Latin, for Latin America was because of me here in the U.S. Every show she did in the U.S. was because of me. I helped this girl from day one. I always believed in her talent. This is a fucking roast. And I'm two bottles of vodka in. Instead of her saying, you know what? That's not Richard. Yeah. The Richard I know put me on Sigue La Risa. The Richard I knew put me on Netflix. Mm -hmm. The Richard I knew put me on, on HBO. He wouldn't want to hurt me. That's the alcohol talking, like anybody else. And I'm not making excuses. I did what I did, and I man up, and it's my mistake. I shouldn't have drank that much. But as a friend, you would go, nah, guys, that guy. And you can look this up. It's not something that I'm making up. Like, and you can ask her, how yeah. did you get into these places? Who brought you here? And I have text messages, too. But you understand? So instead of her saying, you know what, this guy's just having a tough time right now with COVID or, or, or being a little more empathetic and trying to see what really is going on. Yeah. What she did is she went on a rampage and said how she was offended and how could I? And that's what happens when you have Drive. no talent. And just oh, fucking. Shit. And she even told other comedians, yeah. thanks to him, my numbers went up and I used it. I milked it. And she did. And she milked it. And she used me as leverage. And she said, fuck him. I'm going to go shit all over the fucking... Instead of defending him, I'm just going to go shit on him. So at, at any point throughout that career after that, did you go through a moment or did you have like one of those moments where you're like, damn, maybe going through the, that either shaped me, broke me, or made me be different? Oh, it definitely made me stronger. It put a lot of things in perspective. It gave me three years to think. I just gave you an answer. I said, my focus is my daughter. Yeah. Because the world will judge you. I had death threats after that. You understand? People were saying, Estamos un levantón, güey. Ya se te vuela chingada. You're not going to work in oh, Mexico fuck. again. Guys, I didn't want to work in Mexico. I <laughs> know for a fact you did not go to Mexico. Pinche levantón ahí. Vas al oso y te chinga, güey. Pagan en pesos, güey. I wanted to give you jobs over here. <laughs> My plan was never to go get any fucking job in Mexico. Come on. Think about it. I even had offers. I had offers. God says, hey, I have a tour for you here in Baja California. I said... Bro, you're paying me, like, less than what I would make here as an open micer. Like, I can't go for that amount of money. Yeah. No offense. My plan was never to be, a, 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 you know, as a comedian in Mexico. My plan was to bring Spanish comedy to the U.S. and charge yeah. dollars for it. But, um, but no, bro, that just made me stronger. And it re made me realize my family is my, my, my core. And I'll focus on my daughter. And my daughter will get to you. See, it's never going to go away. This, yeah. I'll always Yeah, we, we talked about this right out, right out of the camera. What some people don't understand is as soon as you put videos out on any social media platform, it's out there. Yeah. It's out there. Yeah. People save it. People send it. People share it. Screen record it. Screen whatever, record it. Bro, and they do lies. everything. They do everything. But I love what you say, and I love how you say it, because no matter how the fuck I say this, it's who the fuck I am. Yeah. You don't like it? That's on you. You don't love it? It's on you. But don't come back later when everything is up and dandy saying, you've always been. Nah, don't do that. No, no. See, you know how you do it? I took all those bad comments, and I didn't read them. I just had my manager go through them. And I said, hey, dude, do me a favor. Go through all that shit and block every single person talking shit. 
Mm. Block them all. Block them all. Yeah. Block them all. I don't care who it is. Just block them all. Block them all. Block them all. Because when when because this is a fucking pentalum. Yep. It's gonna it's gonna come back. And when I come back up, those motherfuckers are gonna want to go see. Then go open a new account, motherfucker. Yeah. Because your right. account's no longer welcome here. Como, I want you to el, tell me, I can't get into your account, then you must have talked shit, motherfucker. Como esa canción I el, only block motherfuckers that talk shit. Ese con, es la canción El, el Columbio. Columbio. Yeah. Todo, sube. Pendulum, yeah, pentalum. Y va a bajar. Yeah. And that's the thing. Um, we, we, we ask usually a, a lot of our, of our guests, and I really want to ask you because, I mean, you have to be the first guest as como es. Al Chile, who gives a fuck what anybody what says. What kind of pussy motherfuckers have you? Hit? <laughs> <laughs> you talking to mom? What the fuck? Am I? Am me? I? If you're watching this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, but you come out because you're not just you're not talking out of your, you're talking because of experience. Yeah, you're saying all this shit. How you said your experience built you the way you are now. Yes, you live life the way it was, and that's why you are who you are now. Yes. And that's what everybody gets to see. That's what everybody buys tickets. Yeah. That's why everybody goes to watch you. Um, would there be something that you would tell your younger self? Believe in yourself. Don't hide behind other people's talents. Believe in yourself. You, you make excuses and you derail your own future and your own path and your own goals for other people because it's safer. Because... They're setting up the rules. And for you, that's comfort. And I did it all the time. I always try to help other people, and, I, and that was a crutch for me. Because if I'm helping you, that gives me an excuse to not focus on me. Yeah. Does that make sense? So I always help people. The Refry Show was one of the hottest shows that put a lot of Latinos on stage. When they told me, hey, Richard, no more Refry Shows. You only have three more weeks. I told my manager at the time, hey, Cancel whoever the fuck was booked in the next three weeks and get all the open micers. The guys that just, I don't give if it started yesterday. You put them on that fucking stage and book them, put 10 at a show. So we had 30 new comics go on that stage and perform at the Hollywood Improv on one of the hottest nights. Why did I do that? Because I understood that they were never going to be on that stage in the next 10 years. If I didn't give them that opportunity for them to feel that stage, to know that they can be there, that they can believe, then I wasn't going to be able to do that again. So I did it, and I sacrificed those last three months, and I didn't even show up. I didn't want them to feel the pressure of me judging them. I said, have fun, guys. Learn what it's like to be at the Hollywood Improv, because you're not going to be invited in the next 10. And it's, it's not nothing about pride, because, like, I mean, God, you did damn. this for them. Yes. You know, you didn't but, do this for yourself. But I did it for, for them, yourself. but I also did it as an excuse. So I created Refry to hide behind Refry. If I would have been selfish and focused on my career, and exactly. if I would have believed in myself... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here. I'd be fucking with Fluffy somewhere in Europe. You know what I mean? But I didn't because I, I used that as a crutch. And I'm being honest with myself. And if you're out there following your dream, stop helping other people. Help yourself. Mm. Sorry, you have to be selfish. If you're going to make it in this world, help yourself first and then look around who can you can help. But get up there first. Get up there. You can't help yeah. nobody if you're down here. Yeah, and what, what's that? We always say this. I want to help other people, but how the fuck am I going to help other people if when I cannot help out it's myself? It's like selling Herbalife when you're fat. <laughs> like, Come on, bro. <laughs> Who the fuck is going to buy that shit? Like, yeah, buy me too. One for you, one for me. Let's do it together, bro. Like, we'll coach each other. You know what I mean? Come on, bro. Yo, this shit caught me off guard as fuck. That was a good one. That was a good one. It's like selling Herbalife when you're fat. Si, si compras todo esto, vas a bajar de peso, mija. Yeah. Compra, mira, por 200 dólares vas a bajar. <laughs> But yeah, bro, that's what I would tell myself. I say, stop the bullshit, stop the distractions, focus on your career, you're funny, believe in yourself. Damn, I hope I make you cry on this one. Hmm? I hope I make you cry on this one. Okay, I hope so. I mean, hope for the right reasons. For the right reasons. But then then right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you gotta um, make me cry, bro. Your career has been an experience. It has been a staple in the Latino and just comedy history in itself. Not just again. I always say I don't want to be just tied down to one just area. It's in everything, bro. We're podcasters, not Latino. We're everything. We're everywhere. Same way as you are. If you, if you can 
now you're where you're at right now. Backtrack it and tell your dad something about this, about your career. My dad? Yeah. Mm. I think it would be badass if my dad was here now because of Luis Alba. Because Luis Alba now goes on stage and, and you, tonight he'll just do it again. He'll go up on stage and he explains to people what happened and he tells people, because of Richard, my career changed because of Richard. We opened these doors. And, and I think that fact that my dad could be here. <laughs> yeah. What would you tell your dad? Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> we made it. Um, yeah. We made it. Here we are. Sometimes, sometimes the doubt people giving you are just inspirations for yourself to go further, you know? And hey. you, use, you use the negative of someone else to make it a positive for you. I'd say. Your dad would have that friend, that, that chair in the front. He stole his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I made money. So technically, I've been making money off of Luis Elba since I was five. But, yeah, because <laughs> he would watch his movies. Yeah. So having my dad being a part of that now. Let's say you were to introduce your dad to uh, Luis Elba. What would you say? No, I don't think I would have to say anything. I think Luis would tell my dad. Like I would just say, Luis, Lolo, Lolo, Luis. And Luis would tell him. I think there's just a lot of emotion right there with the part of your dad. Like, if he was, there was a there was a phrase and a quote that we heard from somebody before. It's like, man, they saw us then. When imagine that we're here now. Hmm? Imagine our the people we lost, right? Because I I have one of one of my best friends, Ernie. You know, he passed away. About a almost two years now. That's at the beginning of all this. Imagine if he was here now to see this. So imagine your dad was here now to see all of this. You're oh, feeling yeah. like your feeling of just seeing that person in front row. Well, you gotta understand. You grew up wanting that. Uh, what do you call it? That approval, especially mm-hmm. from your father. So coming from, from a big family and being able to grab that attention from him, dude, and the fact that he was such a big fan of Luis Alba, where it, it was what justified my career. And yeah. so back then, it was just you get to open up for him. Now in 2016, you're managing him. Like you are in charge of Luis's future. And so my dad, to see that transition, uh, transition the passing of the torch, the fact that my dad says, how did this my son become my son now becomes his boss? The fuck happened? Like, yeah. that came out of my nutsack. <laughs> the guy that told me <laughs> to go to do a show came from my nutsack. Yeah. Do you understand? So it's, as a father, I think it would blow his mind away. The fact that he says, shit, my idol, my son's telling my idol where to go now and where he has to be and where, how much he's going to get paid. In the, in the words of my dad, when I ask him, like, oh, how'd you, como lograste todo? Por mis huevos. Yeah. Por mis huevos logré lo que hice y, y hice lo que hice porque nadie me ayudó, nadie me empujó. Por mis huevos yo hice, el, yo hice lo que tengo. Yeah. And that's how it goes. Yeah. Fuck, I'm, my dad's told me that shit so many times and I'm, Por mis huevos. And it's funny because it's such a hard thing to grasp. <laughs> por tus huevos. Yeah. Sí, por mis huevos. Like, that's it. ¿Qué es eso? Por mis huevos. That por means huevos. it doesn't matter what happens. I'm no. not going to give up. It's going to happen. That's it. It's that mentality. Yeah. But uh, I think that, I mean, yeah, man. If dad was here, that would be the thing. Fucking, I love that. Word. I, I knew the, the, the topic and the topic of, of parents... You, how you've been explaining this since the beginning, you know, with your dad. Just 
but you never use it as a fucking crutch to why not pursue your what you wanted to do. Okay. Am I born this way or am I made this way? Oof. Whatever we call it, uh, is it uh, is it something that you were taught, or it's you understand? Like, yeah. you're, just like you're talking to me, and we're talking about all my success. Yeah, I also have a brother that's in jail for making meth. Do you understand? It's like, how the fuck do you both come from the same parents, some same backgrounds, same streets, same everything? You're one year apart, and one of you. Is going to do a show at the Ontario Improv tonight, and the other one is going to have lunch in fucking Chino State Prison. Do you understand? How is it that two people that come from the same parents now are completely different, and they left, led two different lifestyles? How does that happen? How does that happen is this, choices in life. Be responsible for your own shit. Do you understand? Anybody can change their future. Anybody can change the projection of their life. If you're going the wrong way, you can change it whenever the fuck you want. You can also make a million excuses. But at the end of the day, look at the fucking mirror. It's you, bro. It is you. I'm yeah. fat because I eat a lot of fatty shit. You understand? <laughs> no, I don't blame society and I don't blame the, pres uh, the preservatives or anything. They tell you. You just choose not to read it. If you go to Jack in the Box or the drive-thru, it tells you, this shit's going to cause cancer. And you're like, can I have to... <laughs> Really? God damn, bro. In Mexico, they put people missing limbs and lungs or collapse. Also, shit. give me fucking two photos of my borough. And you still buy it. Yeah. Do you understand? You, you can't make yourself fucking blind to this shit anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a shitty life. It's because you decide that shitty life. My brother's in jail because he decided to live that lifestyle. And with that lifestyle comes jail. You understand? One of, uh, one of the last questions I want to wrap up, wrap, wrap up in... Do you feel, at any point, do you feel bad for your success? Do I feel bad for my success? No. I don't feel bad for my success because I didn't take from anybody to get here. Does that make sense? When you earn it, you, you appreciate it. Yeah. My success is took in 22 years. My success is here. It's took me here, here. Do you understand? And I'm not knocking you. I'm not knocking me. I'm just saying the perspective of success changes. See, what you think is success is different to what I think is success, yeah. to what he thinks is success. The problem is we don't find that success where you feel like you didn't find it, but you're not really looking. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Life is very simple. I already, I'm successful. And, and just the fact that I don't have to answer to anybody. Does that make sense? Mm. I worked for so many big comedians. I worked for so many famous people and I worked for so many rich people. But I had to listen to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. I was with some of the biggest acts. I mean, like I, I would tour the world with these guys, but I still had to listen to them. Yeah. And you're like, fuck you. I'd rather stay home and, <laughs> and chill and not listen to anybody. I'd listen to myself. You know what I mean? So yeah. you might be fucking somewhere where you're like, yeah, I have this. I have that. I do that. Like, I have a lot of friends that do cruises. And my, my buddy was Armando was mm -hmm. arguing with me. He says, bro, I travel the world. I do this. I do that. I'm going to Alaska. I'm going to Europe. You should come do my cruises. I said, no, dude. I don't want to do the cruises. I'd rather stay home and be a father. Oh, bro, I want to, no, I'd rather stay home. I want to be here. I want, my daughter just got a principal's honor. I want to be there. You're on a cruise going to, yeah, but I'm going to Europe. Yeah, but my daughter's not in Europe, bro. My, I told you, the job I wanted, it was being a dad, and I'm going to be the best dad. So fuck you, I don't want to go to cruises. Yeah, that's your success. That's yeah. what you think. But that's not my success. My success and my daughter is we got to fucking play soccer because she wants to join the team. That's my success. <sighs> Different success, bro. Fucking love that, bro. That is amazing. Um, I think literally the last Sheesh. one of the last question, the last question. Is there a quote you live by? Quote. A quote, if it came from your dad, if it's something you've heard, a phrase that you live by when you Los Dias, the days that you don't want to fucking get up. What are you talking about? And you about? don't want to go to work. Or you don't feel the motivation to tell a joke or anything like that. 
my engine is always that, my family. That's my engine. The thing that gets me up in the morning and the reason I'm here, the reason I'm in everywhere, the reason I make time for everything else is because of them. But the code that I always live by in comedy, and I think if comedians are watching this, I can tell you this for sure. After 22 years of stand-up comedy, and it's worked for me so far. Comedy is subjective. Hard work is not. Does it make sense? People can love you, people can hate you, but the hard work, the work ethic, undeniable. Meaning, you can work yourself into a stand-up comedian. You can fucking mold yourself into whatever the fuck you want, as long as you put enough hard work into it. Yeah. God. <laughs> Wait, so are you, a, are you a comedian or are you a motivational speaker now? <laughs> Whatever pays the bills. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk business after. Do, do you need a shot to end this? It is a toast uh, to life. Can we can we get a Mister? He's a pro, Jose's Jose a professional a porter. Professional porter. Pro, professional. Porter. Pro, fresh, professional. 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 Apparently he fucked up because it should have been ready, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give a I'll give out a little a little phrase a little quote before yes. we take a shot All right, real quick. Cool, cool. Yeah, you, we have to because <laughs> that's that's. And I I think today today. Made what was said to be made, which uh -huh. is not just talk about the comedy, not just talk about the fun and 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 beautiful times, but also talk about the times that fucking got us here. Yeah, and and again, yeah. how how you said how I always say I'm gonna tell you what the fuck I've been through. Don't feel fucking bad. Yeah. Don't feel sad. Yeah. Don't don't it feel. Might it might be a lot. It might be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't feel. Sheesh. I don't want. I don't want your fucking sympathy. I don't want yeah. you. Like I don't want you to feel sad. I don't want you to. Oh my god! No, no, no! It fucking made me. Yeah. Everything I've been through. Lost my uncle to being murdered. My grandpa COVID. My best friend is suicide. And I'm still fucking here, and I'm trying. Hey, I am a dad. I work. I work for a living. I coach for a living. But I'm still trying to make a dream happen. So I. If I can do it, I'm not telling you, oh, you can also, no, I'm going to lead you. I can also do this shit at the same time. Do I lose sleep? Yes. It is what it is. It happens. Am I stressed out? Yeah, it happens. Do I go through emotions? Yes, I do. The next day, you got to get a fucking up. Porque la vida, le vale verga how you feel. Yeah. Le vale verga. You feel sad? Who gives a fuck? You mad? Who gives a fuck? Aparte de eso, bro, you're breathing. God yes. damn, you're alive. Fuck. Be thankful you're, you're breathing. It's funny. You know? People go, cuando llega a mi casa. Motherfucker, nobody told you you were going to get there. True. You want to stop making plans because you don't know what's going to happen from here to your house. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. Fuck yeah. Dylan, you said you had you you had a, mo mo Jeez, a yeah, super bro. motivational. Send us off. It's I know. Come story. on, guy. Yeah, some yeah, of me. Yeah, some, nah, I'm just oh. like, I know. Look, it's getting warm for her. We're not full. We're going to get to the show. Let's see. I was thinking about this one last night too because wow. I was just I was up pretty late, and um, <laughs> why are you laughing? Homeboy's <laughs> laughing over there at me. Um, and I want to talk to all the people that are like going through really dark times or that think they're alone. I just want to say, I wish you. Well, not that I wish. I hope. I hope you win the war that you tell no one about. You know, because everyone has a war that they're going through. By themselves and that they don't want to share and it's not that they, they can't share it's just that sometimes you have to go through shit yourself you know and it's just like bro it's just the fact that you have to accomplish it yourself just to feel satisfied with yourself mm -hmm. you can share it as much as you want with friends and family but at the end of the day you're sitting yourself alone in your bed in a dark room by yourself right. so i wish i wish and i hope you win that war and you know yeah i'll stop I Okay, that, well, was that one's still going. Yeah, <laughs> like, that one's still going. Finish it. So, yeah, I mean, hands up to you, bro. You got this. You got this. We love you. And, you know, it's you v. you at the end of the day. And whatever you choose is going to be the outcome of it, you know? Where are you talking? You know, Watch for everybody. <laughs> He's like, who the fuck is he talking to? Hey, but... How we always say, man, this is a toast of life, toast and, it, of life. and it's a toast to what we've been through and what we're going through and what we're going to achieve. Here exactly. it is. Hey, we made a fucking comedian cry, dog. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We did this shit. You made it, bro. 